Um, and uh, we hand over now to Metalite. Over to you guys. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm sorry about the scripts, but we were told we got seven minutes and we wanted we didn't want to waffle on too long. Um, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity uh, today. I'm Darren Brough, Managing Director. And I'm Lou Sweeney, Sales Manager. The 15th of June 2017 was the day after the Greenfield tra tragedy and it was the day that IntelliClad Idea was born. Having myself been in the cladding industry since leaving school, I wanted to use my knowledge and experience to stop a repeat of the Grenfell tragedy happening again. My first idea was to use nanotechnology sensor into new panels, but then I quickly realised that the real problem wasn't the panels going onto new buildings, it was the dangerous combustible cladding that was on the on tens of thousands of buildings already in existence. We needed to provide a solution quickly. It soon became apparent that in order to do this, a wireless fire detection system was the answer. Our unique idea was to install the detectors physically into the combustible facade. You may ask, why aren't people biting our hands off for this solution? The current NFCC guidance on simultaneous evacuation states that an internal heat sensor near the opening into a facade is deemed sufficient enough to remove the waking watch and make buildings safe. The reason that NFCC deem this as adequate is because they believe most facade fires start internally. However, this is not the case. Research conducted independently by Matthew Bonner, who did a PhD in fire science at the Imperial College London, concludes that 60% of all facade fires worldwide since 2010 have started externally. Examples of two in the UK are Richmond House, which was a barbecue on a balcony, and the Cube Bolton, a discarded cigarette. So how could we prove that our idea actually worked? We needed to test it. We approached the directors of the Fire Protection Association. They suggested that we build a full-size rain screen rig, which was 9 metres by 10 metres, to replicate a real-life facade. The materials consisted of a combustible ACM and non-combustible aluminium. Smoke and heat detectors were installed strategically into the facade. The results were amazing, exceeding all expectations and providing, proving that IntelliClad to be a fantastic early warning system. The FPA directors were blown away at the results and congratulated us on our idea. We can obviously provide more information about the results upon request. So, where are we today? We've completed six installations so far. The following photos or selection showing some of the different facade types we can install into and how we install into them. So actually we use up sailors who go down and we go straight into the facade. We're only six, you may ask. Well, it's not for lack of trying. Um, fire safety is a box ticking exercise in order to conform to standards and it's usually done for as cheap as possible. We ask, does having a heat sensor internally really make buildings and its residents as safe as possible? The answer is no. Simply, if a facade fire starts externally, it then has to breach internally in order to set off the detectors and raise the fire alarm for the residents to evacuate. By then, the facade is already on fire and breaking compartmentation fast. In a real world application, does IntelliClad really work? The answer to this is yes. We know this because one of our installations in London actually had a bin fire. A smoke detector in the bin store went off and exactly four minutes later, smoke had travelled into the cavity and the first IntelliClad detector installed in the combustible facade was triggered. The system worked as it was designed to do. The fire was identified at its earliest point and extinguished quickly before it had a chance to start spreading up the facade. But what if the bin store wasn't internal? Please look at the photo on the screen. Many, many bin stores are external and situated next to a building. If items in this bin area caught fire, it would be like a bonfire directly next to the combustible facade. How would the residents be warned if facade fire would and evacuate? Would they have to wait for it to breach and set off the internal heat sensor, at which point the facade fire could be in full flow? IntelliClad is unique, tested, patented and proven to work in a real-world situation. 
So why then in Clericlad? We've spent countless hours and tried various routes to get in touch with local councils, private landlords, NHS, fire services, housing associations, insurance companies, and finally the government, in order to discuss the benefits of having Teleclad installed. Lord Greenhow, Minister of Building Safety, was very interested in Teleclad. We met at an installation in South London. As predicted, he understood and championed the system, even mentioned us in the House of Lords and on Twitter after his visit. He agreed there is a need for interim solutions before remediation can take place and called for more innovation, like in Teleclad. Not only members of the English government, but both the Scottish and Welsh governments have also shown great interest. But as you know, the wheels of this grind very slowly. Directly over the road was a residential property covered in combustible cladding. I showed Lord Green how exactly what the matter was with the property, explaining how the timber at the bottom, PUR combustible installation behind the HBL cladding. The HBL cladding covered the entire building, and HBL also burns just as ferociously as the ACM on Grenfell. So where should Intelliclad be used? Intelliclad should be used on any property with a dangerous facade. This means either residential property, student accommodation, hospitals, hotels or care homes. If you have a property in your portfolio that is a, has a dangerous facade, then surely you'd want to protect that property and the people in it until remediation can take place, which we all know could take up to 10 years or even longer for some buildings. Many believe the current standards outlining the need for an internal only fire alarm system is not sufficient enough protection. Not only are we concerned about the dangerous facades on thousands of buildings, there's also the issue of extortion, uh, extortionate insurance premiums that residents just cannot afford through no fault of their own. On screen, we show a few examples of the increases, some in excess of 1,900%. We believe IntelliClad should be used as a risk management tool. If you have IntelliClad on a building, you are adding an extra level of building safety. You're detecting a facade fire at its earliest point, giving the asset more protection and reducing the risk of a serious facade fire, which could result in a catastrophic loss. I'm going to use an analogy of a tracker on a car. You buy a new car, you have a tracker fitted, and it reduces your premium by reducing the risk of loss. Intelliclad installed onto a building reduces the risk of a catastrophic disaster due to early detection. Therefore, surely building premiums can be reduced. If premiums were to be reduced, then the insurance industry would not look so unscrupulous by taking advantage of the situation and their business would increase to offering reduction. Basically, we believe the first company to adopt this will be ahead of the competition. That was seen to be finding some sort of solutions to the cladding crisis and helping their customers in parallel to reducing the risk of their assets. Only last week, we received the prestigious award for Smart Technology of the Year at the London Construction Awards 2022. Finally, some deserved recognition for the innovation and hard work of the IntelliGlass system. I thank you all for your time and would welcome any questions. So guys, any questions for the class? Hello. The, the, the can be withdrawn as you as you if you're coming from the top down yeah, yeah the sensors can be brought out as as you're coming down the building so the, the lower floors can still have that system because it's on a it's on a wireless mesh, uh, mesh network okay. Thank you. any other questions guys i have a couple <laughs> um your system is it linked with the internal system can it be linked with the internal system yeah into any building management system that's already got okay and it's included within the control panel i take it yeah we yeah. integrate straight directly so into the on a zone system or a um intelligence system it will show as a separate zone on the control panel we should, we've got our a separate control panel that integrates into their control panel. So basically, um, each detector is addressable. So as soon as um, the, alert, the alert was raised, you'd be able to see which detector went off. Right, okay. 
Fantastic. Any other questions, guys? No. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect time. <laughs> okay, then, guys. The next up is uh, Tim from Trek Wireless. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Walford and I am the Managing Director of Trek Wireless Limited. I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about our new service, DTAS. Before I start, I'd also like to thank the British Property Federation for giving me the opportunity to present to you this afternoon. Some background about Trek Wireless. We've been capturing reality for a number of years, starting in 2005 when we were the first company to create a database of geotagged street images of London, in fact, two years before Google. Since then, we've done everything from low-level aerial photography for TFL through to creating 360-degree virtual tours and 3D floor plans for a wide range of UK companies. We've worked with everyone from Argos, Butlins, Jaguar Land Rover, through to Marriott, and Yotel hotel groups. We're now looking at how we can bring our wide experience of image and reality capture to high-rise residential buildings. Looking at the current compliance landscape, there is an awful lot going on with new regulations and standards being rolled out. At a practical level, this means more documents being created, updated, tracked and stored together with the need to share information between multiple stakeholders. DTAS stands for Digital Twin as a Service. Basically, what we are doing is combining virtual tours, 3D floor plans, aerial imagery and reporting on a common platform and providing it as a service. Let's have a look at some screenshots taken from our online demo platform. This is the reception area of a large block of flats in West London. A couple of things to point out. Firstly, this is a real building which the owners kindly let us photograph and survey. But all the data that you see is demo data, not real data for the building. Also, this is a screenshot of a 360 degree view. So if you look at the demo online, you can pan around and move up and down within the 360 view. We can annotate any area within the 360 degree view. Here you can see we've highlighted the fire alarm control panel and the premises information box showing when they were last inspected. To see an aerial view of the property we can tap click on the aerial view icon in the top left of the screen. Trek Wireless is a Microsoft partner, so we've integrated Microsoft's Bing Maps bird's eye imagery, which provides a range of views of the property from different perspectives. We also have a partnership with a drone company, so we can create custom outdoor high level imagery if required. Returning back to the ground floor, to navigate to another floor, you can click or tap on the floor index icon in the top right of the screen. The floor index appears, so let's have a look at the second floor. Here we have the floor plan for the second floor. This is a view showing the flat numbers. We can toggle this view to a utility and fire equipment view, which shows the position of the riser cabinets and fire related equipment. All the descriptions you see are clickable, so let's have a look at the wet riser. We're now looking at the 360 degree view of the second floor staircase. Panning around, we can see the wet riser and when it was inspected and when it was tested. You may notice a camera icon in the bottom right corner. Clicking on this opens up a virtual camera which can be used to capture an image of any part of the virtual tour. This image can then be downloaded or emailed. 
which is great for sharing information between a range of stakeholders. Returning to the floor plan, let's now have a look at flat 21. Here we can see flat 21. The AOV is on the right and the riser cabinet on the left. If we pan around towards the riser cabinet, we can see when the fire door was inspected, together with a brief description of the contents of the cabinet and also where to find the key. Clicking on this item lets us then look inside the cabinet. We can click on the blue circles to continue walking around the corridor. Turning to our right, we can see the fire exit door. The blue arrow would take us back to the landing. You'll notice the label on the door has the option to read the fire door report. Let's take a look at it. Clicking on the link opens a new web page displaying the latest fire door inspection form. We're also doing a lot of work around forms creation and management so that relevant forms will be easily available to complete, upload, track and report against. Managing agents have told us that they are swamped by PDFs and spreadsheets. So our goal is to provide a simple system where assets can be managed easily and any non-compliance easily flagged, tracked and resolved. That's a very brief overview of DTAS, just to add that it works across desktop, laptop, tablet and mobile devices. No app is required, just a Wi-Fi or mobile connection. We're planning to launch the service in December this year. The pricing model will be based on a per flat fee, which will be much less than £8 per flat per month to avoid having to issue a Section 20 notice. I hope this quick walkthrough has given you a better idea of what DTAS is. The demo is available online. Either use the link or scan the QR code with your mobile or tablet device. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Tim. Any other questions? Thanks, Tim. Um, okay, I believe it's height safe next, is it not? Ah. <laughs> we got technical difficulties. Um, would you mind then sharing the screen? All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's green now. <laughs> My name is Luke. I'm presenting on behalf of an organisation called Height Safe. Um, Height Safe started in 2009. We are a fall prevention um, and fall arrest specialist who've branched out into a number of different areas. Um, so it was started by a gentleman called Ken Dybel, um, who comes from a property and health and safety background. Now. The company works predominantly with end users now, but when we started, we were working with main contractors providing for prevention groups, that's safety lines, guardrail, fixed access ladders, um, abseil solutions, etc. Um, so I'll just give you a quick overview because in all honesty, I didn't know I had seven minutes. Um, so we provide all of these services in-house, nothing is subcontracted. Um, so you've got a range of different services from your PPM, statutory servicing of equipment, design, supply and install, um, which is obviously working with main contractors coming up with full prevention solutions during construction. Um, and then moving into services such as lightning protection, which is obviously structural protection of lightning buildings from a lightning strike. Again, we do design, supply, install and maintenance of that equipment. Um, we also have a training division which looks after rooftop safety awareness, um, rooftop safety and basic tower climbing, tower rescue, etc. Um, we provide PPE as well, so that's harnesses, lanyards and any other full prevention PPE you may need. Um, the, that's a basic overview of the equipment that we supply um, and install and maintain. Um, there's a lot of it, so I'll just quickly flick through it. Now, what I think is going to be more useful for the purposes of this meeting is our sister company, which is HS Roofclad. Now, HS Roofclad in recent years has worked very closely with building developers, both in new build and in remediation. 
so from a new build perspective, we supply cladding and we install cladding, working with various manufacturers across the UK. Um, we also look very closely now at the investigation of buildings, as we've all touched on today. Um, now, we are employed as a facilitator. So when you have a consultant that is looking to gather a report on any potential remediation, we would facilitate that work. So they would come to us with a plan of, we need to look at X amount of locations on this building to find out if there are any remediation requirements. So what we do is we provide all of the access equipment. So we close roads with the council, we provide the uh, cherry pickers, we look at permits, and then we provide the facade experts to actually go and do those intrusive works and then make good on the day. So we're actually working very closely at the moment with Barrett Homes, um, looking at their investigation portfolio, and then obviously moving into the remediation portfolio as well. Um, and then this is just an overview of the company structure and the main management, which you can see there. Um, some case studies here um, of what we've done and are doing. So we were actually invited here today um, by CRM students, Brett Silk and Matt Kendall, who some of you will know. Um, and we are currently recladding two of their student accommodation blocks in Wembley. Um, we were working on this for about two years prior to actually going to site. So we worked with an organization called Wintech, um, who were responsible for producing the facade report. And we facilitated the investigation works. And then now we are on site doing the full scale removal and replacement works. So that includes the external cladding, the insulation, um, the installation of fire and cavity barriers um, and the replacement of the back and structure, the SFS back and structure as well. Um, this was another project that we did. So this is more from a building maintenance perspective. Um, we installed debris netting to this facade because the actual cladding was starting to crumble um, and pose a health and safety risk. So this was all installed via Absail um, to provide a short term solution before it was then replaced. Um, these are some of our investigation projects we've done for CRM. So these buildings needed um, a facade investigation to identify any remediation works. So we facilitated that in line with the fire engineers that they'd employed to produce the reports, etc. cetera. Um, now we actually, from a, a man safe testing perspective, we look after large scale portfolios for the statutory PPM maintenance. Um, so that's organisations like Tesco, Selfridges, um, and a number of student accommodation managers like CRM. Um, and as I said, we've been working with them for the last five, six years. Um, some overview there of the clients that we work with, um, that's across all of our services. So I don't think there's a single service that CRM haven't had off us to date. <laughs> Um, accreditations, so you can see the, the health and safety focus were actually most recently uh, UCAS accredited 18,001, 14,001 and 9,001 as well. Um, and that's a very cheesy picture of myself and my director. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, I think I'm a bit ahead of time to be honest, but never mind. Well done, Luke. Thank you. Uh, any questions at all for Luke? Anything? No? Okay. I don't have any Luke either. No, no, I do apologise. It's okay. Um, superb. Thank you very much indeed. No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more. Do we? Um, I'm Ryan, I'm from Evolutions Fire Protection. Um, we're a third party uh, passive fire accredited company for installations. We've brought along um, Aaron Gardner from Nullifier, which is a product manufacturer. We spend most of our time installing their products to their test data sheets and to their, basically to their criteria. We've put a short video together, uh, together today just to make things just a little bit easier. 
Since Evolution's fire protection was established, we strive to complete any undertaking to the highest compliance standard possible. With year-on-year -year growth and ever-growing client base, this core principle has never been lost. We have the flexibility to undertake projects of any scale and location within the UK. Evolution's Fire is aiming to be the leading fire protection contractor in the UK. Evolution's Fire Protection was first established in the Garden Office in 2015 as a need to comply with the compartmentalisation within the dry lining industry. We are able to provide both commercial and residential properties the certified and compliant fire protection measures they require. With over 20 years experience in the construction sector, we have an incredibly experienced insight into construction which is utilised to inspect, identify and overcome challenges faced within the UK building stock. Evolutions Fire offer a one-stop shop providing passive fire protection, remedials and any associated dry lining, decorating works in-house without adding unnecessary complexity. From detailed intrusive surveys to consultation and deliverance of remedials, Evolutions can assist at every stage of the project. Passive fire protection is a crucial component in compartmentalisation of a building. Given the importance and risks involved from an installation's failure, there are many factors to consider for each solution proposed. From materials, substrates, services or requirements, to even the intended fire resistance, we thoughtfully take all of these factors into consideration and deliberate on the appropriate solution. From this, any supporting documents, information, processes, materials are all passed to our team on site to ensure they fully understand the requirements to undertake the solution. Using digital platforms, Evolutions are able to keep an eye on the installations being conducted in real time, allowing us to flag any issues or questions off-site that need to be reviewed further. As the most important thing Evolutions abide by is that installations undertaken are all to tested manufacturer and regulatory standards. A core principle for Evolutions Fire is to maintain direct control and supervision for all our projects. One such example is the following project in Ipswich, consisting of 14 residential properties which were under threat of a prohibition notice. Evolutions Fire was contacted and asked to review the compartmentalisation of these properties. An intrusive survey was undertaken and revealed poor standard of fire stopping in place throughout. Through liaison with the client and the local authorities, Evolutions Fire Protection was issued a contract to undertake required works. As contractor, it's Evolutions' responsibility to deliver a safe working environment for residents and contractors. Through our devotion, Evolution's fire protection deliver the projects not only meeting requirements for regulation, authorities, insurance and building owners, but ultimately to provide the best protection to save lives and property. So that was pretty much the easy route of trying to explain we'd rather show you. So basically, as we said, Buildings are always under attack. Attack might be the wrong word from new services, data cables uh, and stuff like that. But primarily, these cables or services are put through compartment lines, which then deem the compartment line insufficient. So our job is then to come, come along, uh, do a detailed survey for a client, or just carry out installations to bring the compartment back up to its required standards. Um, basically, we offer a one-stop shop where we can undertake dry lining works from uh, walls, through to ceilings, paint and decorating, and also uh, issue certification and full documentation for any works that we undertake with the support of the product suppliers as well. So that's basically Evolutions in a nutshell. If you've got any questions. The fire rating is determined on the fire strategy drawings for a building. 
as we know, many buildings don't hold the fire strategy drawings. So we can only make an assumption by the build up of the wall, the fabrication of the wall. So certain types of wall will offer certain fire protection. So nine times out of 10, we will try to get fire strategy drawings, which will define the fire compartments, which we then follow the installation to the guidance of that. If not, evolutions offer a higher, a higher install to meet the requirements anyway. So if it's 30 minutes, we'll offer 60 minutes just to cover that, just to cover that basis. Um, the building regulations um, approved document B um, will guide you on the fire rating. So as the, as the manufacturer of the passive fire product, protection products and obviously evolutions as the installer, we would not be able to guide you as the client or designer of what that fire rating of that compartment is. That would be the job of the, you know, the design team or the fire strategy in place for that project to tell us what you need to achieve. So as the manufacturer and as the installer, what we're trying to do is reinstate the original fire rating of that compartment line. So it would be down to you guys to tell us, is it a 30 minute, 60 minute, 90 minute, 120 minute based on what's in the approved document B building regs. Any other questions, guys? I've got a couple for you. Yep. Do you cover the whole of the UK or are you restricted? We cover, yeah, we currently cover the whole of the UK. Um, we're more based in the M we're within the M25, but we do venture out for right. specific projects. So, you, yeah. Your primary location is London, London based, London. but we are we do we do cover we do cover the nation, so yes. Okay. Um, and what's the accreditation? What accreditation does we're the currently have? registered under BM Charter? Certified under BM Charter for installs at the moment. Okay, and level of insurance? Level of insurance, we hold a 5 million PI and 10 million public and uh, indemnity insurance. Okay, that's everything. Everything from me, guys. Anything? No? Thanks very much. Okay, then um, that is all the seven presentations. Um, hopefully you've all uh, you've found something of interest. Um, I have to say that in putting this event together, uh, we could have easily done double the size of this. Um, and I believe we're talking of potentially doing another one, are we not? At some point in the fairly near future, depending on the feedback from this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I think all of us that are involved in this industry at the moment, um, we're all coming across innovative ways of solving issues that we're all facing. Um, and the idea of this really is to, to try and um, do like a best practice or get that information out there. Um, and I personally think this, I mean, this is a really good forum. All right. Unfortunately, it, it, you know, we didn't get the sort of numbers we'd hoped for today, but certainly next time, um, we hopefully we won't have to change uh, the, the date so quickly. But I want to, you know, if you think this is a good idea, please um, let us know. And um, I say hopefully that will um, drive the BPF to, um, to organise it again. Yeah. Please keep 
talking to each other. I hope you found yourselves to be uh, thought provoking, to be able to contact each other, keep thinking about this topic because it is literally life saving as a topic. So, what you do on a day to day basis, I'm thankful that you have your jobs and you're thinking about it. We all are in uh, our lovely same place, but I'm sure many of the BPS members are too. So, I would encourage this conversation to keep going. We'll be very happy to host whenever you would ask us to. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for your time this afternoon and keep talking. Thanks, Okay, then, guys. Thanks again to Chantal. Thanks to Grosvenor for, for hosting the event. Hopefully, you've got something out of it. Um, once again, don't forget it's being recorded. Um, if you would like a copy of that recording, let us know and we'll make sure you get, uh, get a copy. Um, please feedback and hopefully, we'll see you again very soon. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.